folks. This is uh, Stein Brook from Stein Air again. And uh, I thought I'd take a moment today to uh, take a look at a few things. I get a question about every other week from people who are sort of embarrassed a little bit to ask this question, but I got to thinking uh, I've yet to find somebody born with this knowledge. So people routinely call and ask me about uh, what do all these definitions mean? They're trying to understand a system. They don't understand what a GDU is and a Atahars and a compass and a remote magnetometer and what all these things are. So we got this panel almost done here. I thought we'd take a look at it and I'll tell you what a few of the components are. And uh, it's just, just a basic 101 um, of what various components are. I'll try and keep this uh, as steady as I can to keep you from getting sick, but um, I've got the camera in my hand so I can walk around and show you the various components. So looking at this panel, obviously it's a G3X system, the smaller screens, not the newer, larger screens. Uh, when you hear the word DU or GDU or uh, display unit, that's what we're talking about, these display units right here. Um, they come in and out of the panel. It can be one or two or multiples. Um, different manufacturers call them different things. For Garmin, they use GDU. It stands for Garmin Display Unit. Obviously, Dynon's no, not going to call theirs a GDU um, or Grand Rapids or any of those. Uh, that's another uh, display unit. Um, they, they can move in and out of the panel with uh, uh, just some screws and easy tools. Over here in the radio stack, we have a GPS, that's a, a GTN 750 on top, a radio in the center, and on the bottom, the autopilot controller. Um, this is Garmin's version of that. And uh, as long as we're here, we have a small Dynon over here as a backup. It's a wonderful little box. And uh, in Dynon Skyview Network, they also use components um, that are remote mounted. One of them is the Atahars box. People frequently ask us, what is an Atahars? So here's a picture of the Dynon one. They're all very small for the most part. Uh, the Dynon Atahars right here is unique in the fact that it has the compass built into it and that's also called remote magnetometer. The neat thing with that is you'd only have to mount one box instead of two, but the downside is you have to mount this then in the back of the airplane um, away from the instrument panel so that it doesn't have interference from uh, magnetic uh, or EMI or RF interference. You'll note on here the three ports that go in there, the Atahar stands for Air Data Attitude Heading and Reference System, and there's static, pedo, and AOA. Pretty much everybody has that now, and uh, that's what the Dynon one looks like. It's very small, very light. You do have to mount this one uh, level with the uh, direction of flight and uh, level with the aircraft, um, and it must be facing forward. There's really not a, uh, uh, a lot of options on this box for mounting. This one's what's called the EMS module. All the manufacturers now pretty much have one. They call it an EMS or an EIS. It stands for Engine Monitoring System or Engine Information System. It's the box that all of your engine sensors and probes will plug into, like the uh, EGT, CHTs, oil pressure, oil temp, fuel flow, all of those things will plug into these boxes. These don't care how they're mounted or where they're mounted, so we usually mount them where it's convenient um, to hook up the engine probes and sensors in the aircraft. Here is the Garmin version of remote magnetometer or remote compass. It's very light, weighs only an ounce and something. Um, it needs to mount somewhere away from magnetic interference, so either towards the back of the airplane or out in a wingtip. The easy thing about this, and on the RVs, it can go just on the aft deck where the horizontal stab attaches. It works out really, really well. If we look over here, I have a few servos laying here. Uh, these are just autopilot servos. If you haven't seen an autopilot servo, this is what they look like. This is what the Garmin, or the Dynon autopilot servo looks like, excuse me. Um, very much similar in uh, construction to the TrueTrack servos, kind of the guys that started it all. Uh, TrueTrack uses this style servo, uh, so does Grand Rapids, um, MGL, Dynon, Advanced Flight. Uh, Advanced Flight can use either now the Dynon servos or their own uh, true track versions. It has a stepper motor and a gear train inside bolted on with a shear pin for safety. Uh, the Garmin servo is looks similar but is entirely different. It uses a little DC servo motor. It does not have a shear pin. It uses a clutch instead. A little bit lighter but they mount in the same mounting pattern so you can mount them very similar in the aircraft. They're all very easy to mount. These two belong to this panel. Everybody now pretty much has automatic pitch trim built into their servos. Um, very few wires, as you can see, need to go back to the servo. Same for Dynon, not a lot of wires, just a few wires that go back there. I'm going to move around to the back of this panel here, 
and uh, that way you'll be able to take a look at some of the other components here that we have. And on the way I've set out a Grand Rapids set of components. This is what their remote compass module looks like. Again, you'll see it has an arrow, it says forward direction of flight. And uh, it's very lightweight, very small. Um, that's what their remote magnetometer, their remote compass looks like. This is an AHARS or an ATAHARS module. It's just a box with all the gyros inside of it. This is a Grand Rapids version which has two, it's a dual, so you can see it's twice as high. It's kind of bigger than all the rest, um, has the air data that goes into it, pitot and static, and then the connections up to the instrument panel, but it's not necessarily heavier. This one just happens to have two of them built into one box, it's the only one I happen to have here at the moment to take a look at. Moving over here we have the Garmin uh, engine monitor um, called their GEA. Um, this one has their engine and air data inside of it, or the engine uh, advisory system inside of it. and. Uh, this again will have multiple plugs coming out of it for CHTs and EGTs, uh, probes and sensors. This is what an exa exemplar harness would look like for the CHTs and the EGTs going in there. Um, all of these will just plug into there um, and go to their respective cylinders when it's ready to go. This is the back of a display unit and you can see very thin. Most of them are all very thin now. We just have the tape on there to keep it from getting uh, scratched up when we put it in and out. Um, not a lot of wires going to them. Same for Dynon, not many wires going to them. The Dynon ones are slightly thicker, but not much. Down here we have a transponder. This transponder would be what we would call an LRU in the Garmin world or in the uh, certified world. And the fact that it's a uh, LRU stands for line replaceable unit. That means it can be pulled in and out uh, while it's live, similar to uh, if you computer guys are out there, RAID array. Um, Garmin is unique in the fact that they have built into the back of their uh, back shells for their certified units this little chip that's here. Uh, that's called a configuration module and it hides in the back shell and it stores configuration information for the air or the uh, system that you have in there. So if you go to replace something like a uh, uh, screen in your EFA system for example, it stores all your configuration data in there. Um, same thing with the uh, certified uh, GTN 650. Here's a back of a GTN 750. The configuration mo model module is hiding down inside this back shell. Um, you can't see it, but there's kind of where it would be. That way when you take the unit in and out, you don't have to reprogram the whole thing. Here's the Garmin uh, Air Inc module. This is the converter that uh, converts uh, signals from the radio to the EFIS for uh, uh, like GPS steering commands and approaches and things like that. All of them have them, Dynon, Garmin, Advanced Flight. Everybody has an Air Inc module. This is the Garmin Atahars module. This one's uh, wired up because this panel is running. Also, pedostatic and AOA going into it. You can see a little green light means we got it wired up and it's working. Kind of the neat thing about this little Garmin module, it's not very big, but you can mount it in pretty much any orientation. It can be mounted flat ways, sideways, think of the walls of a room, all four walls and the ceiling can be mounted this way, this way, that way, um, however you like. And once you get it mounted, you just tell the system when you hook it up, this is the direction I mounted, um, please calibrate me. Now some boxes have the AHARs built into them. This is the back of the Dynon D6. You'll notice it still has three ports on it, pitot, static, and AOA. The AHARs or the gyros are built inside this box or it's uh, this instrument. There's nothing to mount, mount remotely with this box except for a small compass. Dynon systems that use a remote compass have this little bugger. It's a super lightweight small little box. That's the remote compass. It does not weigh much, merely probably two ounces or three ounces. Again, it has to be mounted fairly level uh, and the direction of flight is somewhat critical. Uh, this is a box that's a uh, Garmin ADS-B box that's dual band with a uh, wireless uh, Bluetooth in it to go over to your iPad, things like that. Um, but that's a quick look at uh, all of the various uh, components that go in the panel. Um, like this is, like, like we had said, the AHARS module. You're going to hear ATAHARS, AHARS, GATAHARS. They all do have slightly different meaning at its core in AHARS box is an attitude heading and reference system. It's a box full of gyros and accelerometers and sensors and things like that. When you add the AD in front of it, it stands for air data. That's what these uh, ports, why you'll see ports on some of them and not on others. If there's a G in front of all that, some of them have GPSs built into them. Um, that's why you'll end up with a GATAHARS and ATAHARS and AHARS and all those things. 
And uh, if we look at the back of the Garmin, you'll see this is why we have a, there's the GDU for the Garmin display. But uh, I hope that helps uh, just answer some very, very, very basic uh, 101 type questions about what is uh, the componentry on the back of an instrument panel and in your airplane and what you're going to have to mount where, how you're going to have to mount it. Um, this is the back of a RV10 panel, fairly robust panel obviously, multiple uh, Garmin screens in it, a GTN 750, a backup comm. This is just a quick look at the wiring coming out of your 750. It's not terribly complicated, but it is tedious, and you can see once we're done, this is what it looks like hand laced up. Um, this is what the bus architecture looks like on the back of the uh, circuit breakers. But anyway, that's just an overview. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, again, this is Steinbrook from Stein Air. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact us uh, anytime. Our website is www.steinair.com.